Here's a bit about how sessions link together. My mentor, Martha Beck, holds the philosophy of being in a constant creative response to the present moment. I love that. It's so very much not how I lived most of my life before I realized I'm autistic. But I've gotten to a point where that really resonates with me. And so I don't have a specific curriculum that I take everyone through. I don't come up with goals for you at the beginning, and then we work towards meeting those goals. It doesn't work. Because those goals that you set initially are coming from a place of your internalized ableism, and your internalized capitalism, and your internalized painful thoughts, and your trauma history. But as you heal from those things, and as they become less of an influence in your life, those goals need to become less relevant in your life. Because the goals are going to change based upon a new understanding of yourself that's in constant development. It's not like flipping a switch, like, oh, I figured this thing out, and now this is going to be a new static me. You're constantly going to be unpacking layers and layers of the onion, figuring out new ways to be you. And so having a set of goals or predefined curriculum or any set thing to be accountable to from the outset is going to be an exercise in frustration because you're going to be constantly failing at doing that. But failing at doing that is actually succeeding at becoming more authentically you and building a better life for yourself. And I think that the goal becomes a distraction from realizing the beauty of that kind of failure. Because goals, at least in the area of personal development, can be a way of overly focusing on a single thing. I mean, sometimes a broad enough goal can be val valuable, or goals that are more value-based, like figuring out what you want, or how you feel more creative, or more connected, or more meaningful, that sort of thing. Some people want to have more of a link between meetings, like I'm working on this kind of thing, like my relationship with my partner, or making my job better, for example, and there'll be a new aspect to it each session. And some people prefer that every time be completely different. And I like to give you the freedom to be able to choose that. So I generally start sessions with something like, where would you like to start today? Or what's on your mind that you'd like to talk about today? And if you want to keep them linked, you can bring up something that's related to what we usually talk about. And if you'd like it to be something completely different, you can bring up something new. Whatever you bring up, I'll go along with it. So do I give homework? No, except in rare cases when someone really insists. So here's why. I've found that often what happens if I assign homework is that my clients are more likely to spend the entire time between sessions focusing on the homework and resisting doing it and obsessing about not having done it and beating themselves up about not having done it and anxious about what I'll say or think and hating that they care about that and not really reflecting on the stuff that we talked about. But if I don't assign homework, they're more likely to reflect on it naturally and may even do more to actually live into what we discussed than I would have ever dreamed of assigning. So I am not an accountability coach. A lot of coaching and coaches are very goal oriented, like you should be able to strike up conversations with three people or always take your pills at the same time. And the coach provides accountability to get you to do it. I don't do that. That's not my style. And I think that it's buying into the kinds of coercive systems of our society that I want to break away from. Of course, you have practical things that you'd like to work towards, and I can help support you to do that. But I'm not going to create artificial external goals for you, and I'm not going to get on your case about why you didn't follow through on something that you said that you intended to do, or why you chose to do something else. In fact, I rarely even ask follow-up questions on where we left off before, even when I'm curious, because I don't want it to seem like I'm checking up on you. And when you freely update me on what you've done between sessions, I'm not going to get on your case about what happened. That's just not me. And at the same time, I recognize that we all have practical things that we're trying to get better at. And it might be taking your pills regularly, or dealing with this distractibility, or other executive functioning stuff. But how I approach it is by looking deeply at what's going on, 
Why is this not working for you? Is the goal itself inappropriate? Sometimes it's hard to tell because we're so used to thinking about it in a particular way because our society assumes that's the only way to do it. Well, we could gently question that story and loosen the grip of the expectation of doing it the same as others. If you know that you need to do it in a different way, maybe you're not really sure what the other options are, and we can explore those. Or maybe there's something holding you back because of a belief that you should be better than this, or it's not okay to make mistakes, or waiting is intolerable, or you're not allowed to be weird, or you need to try harder, or nothing works for you anyway, so what's the point in trying? Or you're bad at people, so you're bound to mess it up. We pick, so, we pick up so many of those kinds of beliefs throughout our life that influence how we are in the world and how we interact with other people and how we think about ourselves and what we manage to accomplish. And they're usually not true, or at least not entirely. And because some part of you knows that they really aren't true for you, that conflict drains a lot of energy. It takes an enormous amount of energy to believe things that you know really aren't true. So that's my specialty, is deconstructing those beliefs. And then we very naturally go back to the original practical question. And if it's something that you still want, are there other barriers for why you're not doing it? Or maybe that's not actually what you want. So instead of setting artificial goals suge and suggesting tricks and techniques and accountability to meet those goals, that's just more conformity training, I help people figure out what it is that they really want and what's getting in the way of that happening, whether it's thoughts or beliefs or very practical circumstances or not knowing how to do the thing. And especially because I work with autistics and AUDHDers and other neurodivergents, we often work together on how to tweak things that we do so that the methods work for our particular nervous system and our particular brain so that you can actually do the thing. Once those barriers are out of the way, if it's something that you still want to do, you're likely to naturally start doing it. You won't need to have someone hold you accountable for it. I repeatedly find that when there's something that you want to do, and you can do it, you don't need external, artificially imposed accountability partner getting on your case about it. By the way, I'm not saying that goals are never useful. It's not all or nothing. I'm specifically talking about areas of personal development here. But my style is more of working through the thoughts and beliefs that we've collected over a lifetime that no longer serve us. One more example. When you've tried things that didn't work, but that was billed as the only way or the right way, was it presented as your fault for it not working? Did you end up with shame on top of the original problem? That's the kind of stuff that I love deconstructing. Okay, one other thing. Sometimes there's a gap between the things that we want to do and the things that we have the capacity to do. And sometimes there's no way to bridge that gap, but instead it needs to be grieved. And we can work on that together too. So for all of these reasons, I am not interested in being an accountability partner. If that's what you're looking for, there are other coaches who do a really good job with that. But I would love to help you break free of the perceived need for accountability in your life as a motivating factor. To rekindle your internal motivation for the things that you want to do, and your belief that you can. What are my strengths as a coach? What I'm really great at, where I shine, is in helping people to deconstruct the effects of being told your whole life things that have been limiting you and holding you back and making you feel small, unworthy, or trapped. Getting to a place where you feel free and strong and capable. That's my wheelhouse. And as you start to leave behind these painful narratives that used to feel so real, but you begin to see that they aren't, you'll naturally start to make practical changes in your life for the better. And I can help you to help your nervous system to feel safe enough through that process 
that it becomes a partner with you instead of just getting freaked out and overwhelmed and shutting down. 